I'm Brenda, and I'm a faithful believer of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the middle of our married life, I never realized that a person so madly in love with me will, change, will be changed by his drug addiction. As someone who suffered emotional abuse, hearing words of discouragement caused so much pain and suffering. My self-confidence and self-worth was eroded and created hurt so deep. I was blamed for wrong actions, subjected to insults, shouting, threat, and sarcasm, and most of the time accused of not being able to communicate effectively. Experiencing the struggles and pain of a cancer-stricken son and his death was extremely devastating for me as well. But God is good. He made me experience all this pain so I can come to a closer understanding of his truth. Taking my first lesson in CR, I said, oh, this is for my husband. But never realizing, God wanted me to be healed first. For me to reveal my hurts and realize I cannot play God in changing another person's life. The Lord brought me my thoughts and attitudes and actions in line with his thoughts and ways and voluntarily submitted to every change God wants to make in my life. God transformed me within. He filled my heart with so much forgiveness and didn't allow my past to dictate my future. I focused on the healer and not my hurts. And he gave me so much opportunities to share my struggles by helping others overcome their own hurts as well. And now I am celebrating victory over my codependency, my being emotionally abused, to God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Thank you. Glory be to God for the changed life, especially in the area of, uh, in the area of uh, emotion. So how to deal with how you feel. How to deal with our emotional problem. There's a very good write-up found in our um, tidings here written by our brother Leo Esteban. Emotion, can I trust you? You may also read this after our service. So again, we are using our material from the work of Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback Church. So our verse today is taken from Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 30. When one of the teachers of the law came and asked Jesus, Jesus, what is the most important commandment of all? And then Jesus did not answer just that love God, but he answered that love the Lord passionately. He just didn't answer that you have to love God. He answered that you have to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That is a passionate kind of love. Because God wants us to be emotional in loving Him, to be passionate in our relationship with the Lord. And that is full of feelings, right? Before we move forward, let us learn this few facts about emotion. Facts about emotion. Number one, that God has emotion. Do you believe in that? Do you agree? Of course. Our God is an emotional God. He has hatred over sin. Right? He gets frustrated. And that's emotion. A lot of emotion there. And we know that because we also felt these emotions. Right? Are, have you been frustrated before? Have you been angry before? God also went through that. And that is because we are made in the image of God. Now, the purpose of God in creating us in His own image is that we can, so that we can relate to Him and He can also relate to us. So we will know what it means for God to be happy, to be sad, to be frustrated, and to be angry. Now, next is my ability to feel is a gift from God. Positive or negative emotions, they are all asset. If we have no feelings, we are just like robot, right? So we have the ability to love, the ability to, uh, uh, to be generous because of that. So our emotions should be used to benefit us and God at the end of the day. So we are being gifted with feeling for our own use and for the glory of God. However, there are two extremes 
extremes about emotions that we should avoid. Number one, emotionalism. It means that all that matters is how I feel. Now, in this extreme, it doesn't matter if it's wrong or right as long as it feels good. Minsan ang ating mga kapataan ganon, no? Mga emo. Doesn't feel, it doesn't matter if it's wrong or right as long as I feel this, no? Wag niyo akong pakikialaman. Now, if your life is run or dominated by this, this is dangerous, right? We find people today who are, who are, who are that. Sometimes I also feel that. And I would, uh, I would uh, talk to myself, stop it. And also my wife will tell me that. The next extreme is stoicism or stoic. Uh, have you heard this word? Okay. This is the exact opposite of the emotionalism. For this extreme feeling, f- for this... Feelings that don't matter at all. What is important is the intellect, the head, and the mind. No? And that's funny because stoic person usually marry emotional person. An emotional person sometimes marry a stoic person. Maybe they are good combination. No? Try to assess your, your, your spouse's uh, attitude. Are they in this category? Maybe God is really pairing you so that one can help in the, in the extreme of others. Now, these two extremes may not be good and it may be an idol. So that is why we have to take note of this and we have to assess ourselves. Saan nga ba ako napunta? Am I in the emotionalism side? Am I in the stoicism side? Okay? So God will deal with us today in our feelings, in our emotion. Sometimes, a stoic person or Christian will downplay emotions saying that, you know, it doesn't really matter how you feel. The only thing that matters is the truth of God and the Word of God. Sometimes you can, you know, you can meet a Christian like that. Well, the thing is, the Bible tells us that we should worship Him and feel God with our emotions too. Tama? So, hindi dapat tayo magsabing everything should be the truth, should, should be this and that. God also gifted us with emotions so that when we worship God, it involves our emotion. And by the way, the word emotion is not used in the Bible often. Instead, we read there, we read there as passion, as heart, because the heart is the seat of the emotion. Tama? So, emotion is there in the Bible. That is why we say, I love you with all my heart, with all my emotion. A Christian also under the emotionalism may also tend to look for emotion when they go to church. Okay? Minsan, if they, not, they do not feel elated in the worship service, yun bang feeling high, sasabihin naman nila, parang walang espiritu yung church na yan. Nakatayo lang sila. Nagkakantahan nga, walang palakpalakpakan, walang sasayaw-sayaw. You know? There are also Christians who are looking for that. And they would say that the worship is not authentic if they don't have the, the high feeling. They seek emotions rather than God. So emotion can become an idol in the same way that theology or dogmatism can also become an idol if we focus on these two extremes. There has to be a happy medium that we should be in. So emotions are gift. Emotions are assets for us to worship the Lord. Emotions are for us to, to, to experience and to feel God in our worship life. So God give us the book of Psalms in order to understand our emotion. If you have hard times understanding your emotion or the emotion of your spouse or the emotion of other people, try to read the book of Psalms. You need to read it because Psalm has every emotion known to man in it. The positive and the negative, the complaining, the praises, they are all legitimate. So why God placed the book of Psalms in the Bible is because they are here to teach us. So how do we manage emotions? And why should I manage it? You know, it's a skill. If you are skilled in managing your emotion, magaling na tao ka. Magaling po yon. Dahil ang dami po natin i-discuss ngayon that is, you know, 
useful for us in our life, especially in our relationship with the Lord. This is an advantage because a lot of us fail to manage our emotion and sometimes napapahamak ho tayo dahil sa ating mga emotion. So why should I learn to manage my emotion? Number one, because my feelings are oftentimes unreliable. You know, it can oftentimes lead me to wrong decision, wrong direction. How many of us here today say, you know, I know this feeling, I can feel it in my gut. Oftentimes, you fail, right? Minsan sabihin mo, ano, it, trust me, trust me in this, ito yun, ito yun. Pero afterwards, you fail. Because our intuition are often flawed. You just can't depend on your emotion. Not everything you feel is right. Amen? Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. So feelings are flawed. It is unreliable because sometimes you feel good today, later on you feel bad. Sometimes without reason. Have you experienced that? Jeremiah chapter 17, it says here, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Okay, a lesson to a lot of youth today, you do not fall in love by emotion alone. Okay? Your emotion should be guarded by your mind. Just because maganda siya or guapo siya, in love ka na, you have to ask, binata ba siya? Dalaga ba siya? Kaya ba niyang paninindigan pag naging asawa niya ako? Paano pag nanganak na ako? Okay? Paano pag matanda na ako? Will I still feel the kilig uh, feeling? Until your mind is ready for the commitment, your emotion cannot be depended on. Because anytime your emotion will change without prior notice, parang pressure lang yun. Okay? Your emotion is so unreliable. Number two, why should I learn to manage my emotion? Because I don't want to be manipulated. Sino dito ang gustong mamanipula? Wala. If you don't control your emotion, they will control you. You have to manage your emotion. If you are guided by your feelings rather than what is right or a commitment or rather than being guided by the truth, you know, other people are going to take advantage of you. You know, a salesman and advertisers, you know, they are trained to hook you in all possible manners. Their design and packaging are all to stimulate your emotional response. That is why we have this term, impulse buying. Because we buy stuff that we don't really need. You know, this week or last week, we went to a mall with my wife. And we saw this, uh, we, we bought already two items and it costed a little, um, about, a little about 2000 And then when we went to the cashier, there was this promo saying that if your merchandise costs 2000 you will be freed with uh, 300 something an item. Din sabi namin, sabi ng asa, oh ano, dagdagan natin para maging 2000 Para makuha natin yung 300 na ano. Sabi ko, what is that? Gumasta ka ng 200 more para makuha yung 300. Anong ibig sabihin nun? You, you do the math, it's nothing. And do I really need that item? You know, this is to stimulate our emotion. And if you're not going to guard it, mapapahamak ko tayo. Bakit ko nga ba ito binili? Tingnan niyo po ang mga cabinets niyo. Ang dami niyong binili dyan na hindi niyo naman ginagamit. Tama ho? You bought it because of the Stim your emotion was being stimulated and you succumb to it, then you bought it. Proverbs 25, verse 28, like an open city with no defenses is the man with no check on his feelings. Or ibig sabihin, who lacks self-control. You know, our heart is a very good manipulator. Even after listening to the word of God, sometimes you, right away you will say, I will do it, I will do it. But any moment thereafter, you know, you don't want to do it anymore because your heart has already manipulated you. Most of all, this is Satan's favorite tool, our emotion, our negative emotion. Yung fear, yung resentment, yung envy, yung bitterness, yung worry, yung shame, all those negative emotions, Satan will use that so that he can manipulate you. 
So you better know how to manage them. Right? First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone who, uh, to devour. If you don't have self-control, he will eat your lunch, so to speak. He will take away something that belongs to you. Be guarded with your emotion. Number three, why should I learn to manage my emotion? I, because I want to please God. God cannot be God in my life if my emotion is the God in my life. If my emotion is lording over my life, then Jesus cannot be my Lord. And sometimes, your emotion is too strong, even God cannot move you. Because your emotion has become your God and Lord. And Lord cannot just come into your life is your, if your emotion is too strong. Tama po? If I make my decision simply based on how I feel, then I made my feelings my God. And Jesus cannot be my God. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 8, it says, To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. So those who obey their human nature cannot please God. So obedience to God, not obedience to our feelings, will please God. That is why even if it is, does not feel to go to worship, we worship Him because we want to please God. You might ask, Pastor, is there such a thing as I don't want to worship God? Yes. We don't wake up every day feeling in love to Jesus Christ. Tama ho. Do you feel in love with Jesus Christ every day? Hindi ho. Ang hirap ho nun. But we fight that feeling off because we want to please the Lord. Our sinful nature would just drag us to our sinful desire. Even just simply reading the Word of God, sometimes you don't like to do it because of your emotional, uh, emotional condition. But that is not the way to please the Lord. Jesus is our Lord. So we manage our feelings, even our desires for the Lord. So one way to manage our emotion is to teach our soul, our emotion to love God. That is why in our song we say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. You are commanding your soul to bless the Lord. Paul also said or reminded us that be thankful at all times. Even in your grief, even in your trials, why should you be thankful? Because you're teaching your soul to acknowledge the Lord. That is managing your emotion. You just don't thank the Lord based on the good things that you receive. You also thank Him everything. Even in trials, even in sickness. Wow, can I really thank God if I'm sick? Yes. You train your soul. Because in sickness, something good will come out from there. This is managing our emotion. Number four, why should I learn to manage my emotion? Because I want to succeed in life. Do you know that our emotion is the number one predictor of the success and failure of your life? You know, there are successful people today whom we know were able to handle even the most devastating emotions. Mr. Shotiro Honda, the founder of Honda, was successful because he was able to manage rejection by Toyota. You know, he designed a, a certain piston and he was rejected a lot of times. From that rejection, he was able to make his own company. If he was devastated and did not Rise up from there. Wala tayong Honda ngayon. Okay? Edison Thomas, who invented our light lamp. After 1,000 times of failure, he perfected the light bulb. If he gave up on the 50th or on the 100th, hindi wala tayong mga ilo ngayon. You know? So these people, they were able to manage those feelings and they were able to be successful. And countless others are now successful but started with the ability to manage their emotions. If you can manage your emotion, you will be able to succeed life. Amen? You know, studies after studies show that EQ or emotional quotient is now really more important than IQ or intelligent quotient. For success in business, you need emotional quotient. 
because it is far more important than intelligent quotients. A lot of people have very low IQ but are successful in life because they are smart in dealing with their emotions. We also know a lot of people who live by their emotions and waste their lives. They started rich and with so many opportunities ahead of them but ended up poor because their emotions get the best of them. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 23. People get lost and die because of their foolishness and lack of self-control. So how many people you know who ruin their life because of lack of self-control? Many. They ruin a job opportunity because of, you know, a one-night party, you know, unwanted pregnancy, and all those stuff. They ruin their lives for one decision based on emotion. So we want to manage our emotion because we want to be successful in life. Amen? Amen. First Peter chapter 4, verse 2 says, From now on, you must live the rest of your earthly lives controlled by God, by God's will, and not by human desires. So there are four reasons why we should manage our emotions. Now, there are circumstances around us that we don't have control over, right? But our emotions, we have complete control. You cannot control how things around you unfold, but you can control how you're going to react. You cannot control what your friend are going to say in front of you, or you don't have control over the traffic. You don't have control over the things around your house, but you have complete control in your emotion and how you're going to react on these circumstances. So how to manage these unwanted feelings if they come? Number one, you have to name it. You have to identify be specific about your feeling. You know, because you cannot manage a vague emotion. You can only change or control or manage something. You can identify, right? And most of the time, our emotions, uh, we are emotional, but still we don't know why you're emotional. And where did it come from? A lot of times, even pastors fall into this. Bakit nga ba ako nagalit? Bakit nga ba ako nalungkot? Sometimes you need to trace. And then, you have to ask this, what am I really feeling? You need to scratch beneath the surface because what you are feeling right now may not be the real issue. Sometimes, you feel a little sad today and a little depressed and you think that the problem is that you're just sad and you're depressed. You know, you need to ask what's making me depressed. That is how to do this. And then you need to dig a little deeper and see that you are really feeling that because of something. Maybe you're just really criticized by your workmate. Or there is an expectation that did not happen. Then you need to look somewhere down. And sometimes the issue pala is really fear. The issue pala is sometimes anger. The issue pala is jealousy. So you're sad. But the issue is not sad, sadness, but the issue is the deeper. You need to name it, you need to identify it. So sometimes, our irritation to our children or wife or husband is not really about them, but something that I got from my office. Trace it, name it, identify it. And something that happened there and I bought it home, brought it home, at ang aking pamilya, ang aking napagbuntungan. We need to identify it. Mahirap at kawawa ang ating mga pamilya. In a military combat, you need to identify the enemy. Same is true in our spiritual battle. Another thing to ask is, what are my triggers? There are certain emotions that have triggers. You know, something that causes your emotion. Sometimes they are sight. Kung ano yung nakita, trigger ka. Sometimes there are smell. You know, yung smell, uh, it brings you back years. If you smell something, if it was a good memory, then good. But if it was bad memory, pangit, di po ba? Sometimes it's a noise or sound or touch. You know, you need to know these things so that you can avoid them in the future. This is managing your emotion. If you know that something is there when you are, uh, uh, while you are walking, then... Because you know that that's a trigger. You go the other way around. Manage your emotion through that. 
So I cannot tame something until I name it. And I cannot solve my problem until I identify it. Number two is to challenge it. Is what I'm feeling right now as good as they are? Or as bad as they are? You need to challenge it. You know, David often asked the Lord to challenge his emotion. And this is a smart thing to do because God knows our emotion. Every emotion, every fiber of our emotion, God knows it. And sometimes we just have to ask the Lord, Lord, ano bang nangyari sa akin? Ano ba tong feeling ko? Tingnan niyo po ang Psalms. Uh, it's not there. Psalms 26 verse 2. Sabi ng, ni David, Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. Sometimes you need to ask the Lord about your feeling. We ask, what's, uh, what's the reason I'm feeling this? Okay? Maybe it's fear, maybe it's jealousy, and then we need to ask another question, is it true? Or is this feeling valid? Do I even have the right to feel this? Minsan ganun, di ba? Baka naman di ko kailangang masaktan, di ko kailangang magalit. Bakit ako nagagalit? Do I have the right to be angry? No? You need to ask the validity of that emotion. Minsan, transference lang pala. No? Nagagalit sa iyo ang isang tao, ikaw nagagalit na rin, na, pinagalitan mo na ang kasunod na tao. I, do you need to get angry at that point in time? And next is, is it healing me? Or, sorry, that's helping me or hurting me? If it is helping you, then continue with that feeling. But if it is not, then we need to go to the next. You need to change it. You got to change the unwanted emotion. If you want to succeed in life, you have to manage your mood. And part of managing is changing it. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So in all circumstances, our standard should be Jesus. We have to ask the question, what will Jesus feel if he is in my situation? What will Jesus, re uh, how will Jesus react if he is in my shoes? Will he get mad? Will Jesus be insulted? If no, will Jesus be insecure? You assess. You ask that question. If not, then I have to change this emotion. Hindi pala eh. Kasi our, our verse here says that in all circumstances, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So we should dismiss any feeling that does not make us like Christ. And here is the promise of the Lord in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Not by might, nor by the power, sorry, Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It is a promise, mga kapatid, that our desire to manage our emotional life, we cannot do it alone. We cannot do it by our power. It comes from the Holy Spirit. For without Him, we are nothing. So there is nothing good to be produced in us if we trust the Holy Spirit. So every day, we ask the Lord, we ask God to fill me His Spirit. It's not, is it not there? So every day, please put, ask God to fill me His Spirit. Okay? Ask God to fill me His Spirit. Because in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, He will produce this kind of fruit in us. What are these what are the fruit? Love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, when you have bitterness and anger, jealousy, and all other negative emotions, and when the world puts pressure on you, what comes out are those negative emotions. Bitterness will come out, anger will come out, because that's what's inside of you. But if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and when the Word pressures you, what comes out? The fruit of the Spirit. When the pressure of the Word comes to you, you will produce joy, you will produce 
patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So, you can already assess. Pag pressure pala ako ng mundo at itong lumalabas sa bibig ko, sa aking buhay, yun pala ang nasa loob. Naturally, because that's what's inside. Amen? So, ha- ask the Lord to fill you with His Holy Spirit every day. The infilling of Holy Spirit. So if you are full of God inside you, you can handle anything when you are pressured. But if you are full of yourself, you can never handle anything or everything in your life when the world's pressure gets into you. Number two, every day, here, ask God to manage your mouth. It's not there. Ask God to manage your mouth. Eventually, we get here. It talks about our mouth, our lips. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3, it says, <clears throat> Self-control means controlling the, the tongue. You know? Proverbs 13, the same, the same uh, reference, but NLT or New Living Translation, it says here, Those who control their tongue will have a long life. Okay? A quick retort can ruin everything. So your mouth, your tongue has a big role in our destiny, in our life. So you better have God control it because sometimes we cannot control it. Make God's word be my word in controlling your tongue. Begin to put the words of the Bible into your mouth by memorizing it, by loving it, by reading it, by listening, by feeding yourself with the word of God every day. Para siya yung lalabas pag na-pressure ho tayo. Okay? Minsan, talagang sa, sa, sa bibig lumalabas. Pag natapilok tayo, some, you know, words you, you, you didn't expect will just come out. And where did it come from? It comes from the heart. Because your emotion was not being guided by the Lord and so your mouth. Psalm chapter 19 Verse 14, it says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Notice the connection between your heart and your mouth. My heart is re- revealed through my, my mouth. My heart is revealed through the words that come out from my mouth. So people of God, in the third week that we are journeying through this transformed life, we have our emotions. And God already given us the reason why we should control, we should manage our emotions. And sometimes it still gets in the way. We need the Holy Spirit, just as the Word of God tells us today. And I want us to realize that at the end of the day, it is the power of the Lord that can really transform us. We desire it, yes. But God, is the ultimate power that can transform us. Who can transform us? Amen? Do you want to be transformed? Do you want to be controlled by Holy Spirit? Do you want to declare victory over your life through your emotional ups and downs? You know, sometimes it really ruins us. But until you are being submitted to the Lord in your emotional life, then God will just lead you, will just mold you, will just empower you. I want us to declare this, this uh, prayer right now. I just want you to, to close your eyes. And if you are being prompted by the Lord to stand and to surrender to His Lordship over your life, particularly over your emotion, I want you to stand. And I want you to reach out to Him because that is that's it, a challenge that God wants us to, to, to listen and to take heed, take heed of. Lord God, thank You that uh, You are our God and You have control over our lives, especially our emotions. Right now, Lord, we look up to You And we come to you, Lord, for cleansing. 
we come to you. Be the Lord of our lives, O oh God. And not my emotion, not my pride, not my fear, but you, O oh God. Have your way on us. Have your way in our lives, O oh Lord. So that your love can take root in our lives and we can respond to you appropriately in our emotion, oh God. Dear Jesus, I want you all to stand and let us read this call of repentance and healing from our emotionalism. Let us read together. O oh Lord, set us free today as we repent from the spirit of emotionalism. Heal our hearts and minds from fears, worry, and panic. Release upon us the faith to always see the bigger picture beyond our problems. Heal us from jealousy and envy. Remind us that you have a beautiful plan for our lives and that our life story is not finished yet. Heal us from grief, sadness, and depression. Release upon us the joy of the Lord. You alone can turn our mourning into dancing. Heal us from hatred, bitterness, anger, and fits of rage. Teach us to forgive us as you have forgiven us at our worst. Heal us from our frustrations and regrets in life. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we too can rise again. All these we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let's prepare our hearts for our communion.